Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Greetings, good people, especially for our beloved lecturer, Mr. Yosef Ahmad Bani, and also all of our classmates in class 3D. We would like to say thank you for watching to our presentation. It's great to see you all. So yeah, on this beautiful day, we would like to share some of the knowledge we have about the place of articulation. Based on our research and discussion results, of course. Yeah, but first of all, before we start everything, let us introduce ourselves. We are from group five, place of articulation from class 3D, English Education Department 2020, Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, University of Singapore Bangsa, Karawang. And me, myself, is Felicia Santa Ronauli Lumbengal as the moderator and also the first speaker. And here is my beloved partner in crime. Her name is Jamila Hasana as the second speaker. All right, let's move to the discussion. Yeah, here we present a table of contents with the aim of informing the main points that we will talk about. First is introduction, and next is articulation, and the last is place of articulation. Let's move to the first one. Introduction. Before we talk about place of articulation, we have to understand the basic theory first. I will explain, um, or rather remind you again, about what phonology is. What is phonology? Yep, phonology is a branch of linguistics. Etymologically, Phonology comes from two words, two words. Pon, phone in Indonesia means bunyi and logi means ilmu. So phonology means the study of sound or ilmu yang mempelajari tentang suara atau bunyi. Next. Yeah, phonology has divisions. There are phonetics and phonemics. But guys, we have to know that another name for phonemics is also phonology. So don't be confused, please. So how do you differentiate phonetics and phonemics? Phonetics and phonemics or phonology are two different fields of linguistics that are related to one another. We can illustrate this from this animation. The illustration is made by Kenneth. Phonetics gathers the raw material and phonemics or phonology cooks it. So phonetics is the study of production, transmission, and reception of speech sound. And phonemics or phonology is the study of sounds and sound patterns 
of a specific language. Next, please. Yeah, now we move to the second point, articulation. As airflow passes through the focal track, it can be modified by articulatory movement, i.e. by the lips and tongue blocking its passage through the focal track to varying degrees. This process is called articulation. Articulation in phonetics, quilting of the place in the focal track where there is a maximum narrowing of airflow. There are always two articulators involved in making this maximum constriction. The question is, what is articulatory? Yeah, articulator has the same meaning as speech organs. Next please. Yeah, this is the picture of the articulators or speech organs. Speech organs are divided into two types, active and passive. Active, those that can move, and passive, those that remain fixed. Lips, tongue, and vocal cords or glottis are the active speech organs and alveolar reach, feet, palate, velum, and pharynx are the passive one. The locations are on the roof of the mouth. Yep, and this video we will focus more talk about consonant sounds. So what's the difference between consonants and vowels, you might ask? Well, basically, consonants involve some contraction of airflow, whereas vowels do not. When linguists describe consonant sounds, we use three criteria, voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. So yeah, we are going to talk about place articulation only at this time. Next, please. Yeah, as you can see, we have three points that we were talking about. They are the definition, of course, and the parts of place of articulation. And the last is the importance of studying and understanding the place of articulation. Let's move to the first one the definition. Yeah. After the air passes through the larynx, it enters and exits through the mouth and or nose. Most consonant sounds are produced by using the tongue and other parts of the mouth to constrict. The lips, oral and nasal cavity, pharynx, and glottis. As not above, 
when we refer to the place of articulation of consonants, we are describing the place in the vocal tract where there is the most airflow contraction. The term used to describe multiple sounds is one that indicates the place of articulation or point of articulation of the sound. So place of articulation means the location within the mouth where the constriction occurs. In SSBE or Standard Southern British English, places of articulations can be divided into eight parts, namely the labial, labiodental, dental, alveolar, post alveolar, palatal. Weller and Glottal. Yeah, let's break it down. The labial. The first one is syllable. Syllable sounds are sounds made on the lips. B means two. And label is an adjective based on the Latin word for lips. So yeah, in here, the obstruction is created using both the upper and lower lips. In English, we have four syllable consonants. There are p, p, or pa, b, b, or b, and m, m, s, m. For example, p, as in purse and wrap. Wrap, b, as in back, back, and cap, cap, and m, as in mate, mate, and claim, claim. Next. Labiodental. Labio means lower lips, and dental means upper tip, upper tip. So labiodental occurs when you block or constrict airflow by arching your lower lip back and lifting it to touch your upper row of lip. They are represented by the symbol or fa, which is voiceless, and v, v or va, which is voiced. For example, f, as in safe and fat, and v, as in save and vet it's different next next is dental these sounds are formed with the tip of the tongue behind the upper front tip the symbol used for voiceless dentals such as the initial sound of thin and the final sound of 
pet is a f or pa pa commonly referred to as teta the voice dentals are represented by the symbol of or the the usually called at for example of as is thick and bad and the as in the and rather the and rather next Yeah, the last is alveolar. This is sound that is from with the front of the tongue on the alveolar ridge, which is a ridge of girl's bone just behind and above the upper tip. Such as, as you can see, an or na. T, t, or ta, d, d, or da, s, s, or sa, z, z, or za, and la, t and S are voices, while D, Z, and N are voiced. For example, as you can see here, N or N, as in no, and men, men. T, as in type, and rat. D. D, as in deep and bad, deep and bad. Us or sa, as in sweep, sweep and bus, bus and z, z or za, as in zip, zip and Yes, yes, and la as in luck, luck, and fully, fully. All right, everyone, that's all from me as the first speaker. More material about this will be explained by the Thank you Felicia for excusing me. Introduce myself, my name is Jamila Hasana. I'm as the second speaker. I will explain to you about first alveolar. First alveolar, if you feel you are behind the alveolar ridge, you should find the hard part of the roof of your mouth. This is called a hard pellet or simply a pallet, sun produced with the tongue and pallets are called false alveolar. We have S as in shot or press and ch as in cheek or mat. And one point false alveolar isn't very common in English, but can be found as a middle consonant. 
in words such as treasure and freezer. And in right here, we have vision and miser. And another point of a failure is ju, engine jump, or badge. Next. Palatal. These sun are produced by raising the front part of the town toward the heart palate, which is the hard part of the roof of the moat. Palatal sun are not common in English except for the sun as in yes and by you. The next is feller. Sun produced with the back of the tongue against the film are called feller. We make uh, we, we make feller consonant when you lift the back of your tongue to do felon to block or restrain airflow. The sun and ku are fellers. As is the sun un represented by un, un as in going and uncle. Note that the M sun in this word is not made at the alveolar edge, which is why it is this thing from an. And another we have k as in kite and big, and g as in good and bug, w as in wet and howard. Next. The next is glottal. The sun is usually described as poisonous glottal. The glottis is the space between the focal cords in the larynx. Um, when the glottis is open, as in other sunless sun production, and there is no manipulation of air coming out of the mouth. And in English, the following things happen at the glottis, huh? as in high and Bahamas. Next. Okay, and now um, I will explain about another known as SBE. Um, in place of articulation, we have uvular, um, pharyngeal, re retroflex, and coronal. Yes. 
The first one is Euler. Euler. This song. These sun are made by the active body of the tongue to the passive uvula or the active uvula. The uvula is a small fleshy appendage that hangs in the middle of your mouth at the back. If you rinse, if you rinse your mouth, the uvula vibrates. France, Germany, the Netherlands, and Denmark all use uvula articulation for the orthographic. Example are and not clear. Next. Second, um, we have pharyngeal. This sound are made by the active body or the root of the tongue to the pacifering. Next. Retroflex. Retroflex sun are made by bending the tip of the tongue and back toward the back of the alveolar ridge. The only retroflex in American English is our son and we have combination of r and s as in of course the last part of non SSBE uh, in place of articulation is coronal. This one um, made with the front of the tongue are often and a term that doesn't appear on the IPA chart. The Latin of coronal is taken by the word corona, means crown. This is the term is to describe the front of the tongue. Next. And right now we will talk about why the place of articulation is important. The place of articulation is important because it allows us to describe and compare different types of sounds. And that's partly what we did above when we talk about whether people use post alveolar or labiodental articulation side when they generate R, for example. We can make the same comparison when we talk about children's speech or speech heard by a speech and language therapies in a clinic. That's all from me. Thank you.
for listen to me. And I will give it back to the Felicia as the moderator. Yeah. Thank you, Jamila. So finally, we are at the end of the video. Hopefully, everything we have shared can be understood by you and useful for all of us. We apologize for any shortcomings. Thank you very much. See you and have a nice day. Bye.